Praise the Lord, everyone. Uh, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is uh, coming to you uh, from our home again in, in uh, Arizona, Chandler, Arizona. And we are here tonight to uh, continue our Bible study. Our study has been in this last uh, uh, two weeks, it has been on the history of Pentecost. And we're going to continue with that tonight you have your Bibles, we want you to go uh, to the book of Acts. We'll be going to several scriptures there. Then we're going to, to move into where we uh, last were in talking about uh, the 20th century and uh, the Azusa Street Revival and so on. Let us begin with prayer. Eternal Father, we want to thank you for yet another day. For serving, this is the day that you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you will touch each one that is, is hearing us tonight. We pray, Lord, that something will be said to, uh, to cause us to grow deeper in you, for us to know you more, Lord, that we might be better citizens of the kingdom. Now, Father, we pray that you would touch us, Lord, and, and as we uh, attempt to to speak your counsel, Lord, give us, Lord Jesus, the pen, our, our, our voice, a pen of a ready writer, so that we'll be able to uh, say what you would have us to say. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So we've been talking about uh, uh, the history of Pentecost, and we've been uh, discussing the first century uh, Pentecostal movement, and then coming down uh, to now the 21st century uh, church. Pentecost uh, was the promise fulfilled. Ten days after Jesus ascended into heaven, he sent the blessed promise of the Father to the faithful ones who had obeyed and waited in the upper room where they were filled with the Holy Ghost. The word Pentecost, again, designates the 50th day after Passover, which was a feast day. It has also been known as the Feast of Weeks and the Feast of Harvest. On this day in the book of Acts, the Holy Ghost was poured out upon 120 followers of Jesus Christ who were gathered there in the upper room. Let me say this about the book of, of Acts. It is referred to as the Acts of the Apostles, and then there are those who refer to it as the Acts of Peter and Paul. Why that? Because primarily those are the two main characters that are in uh, the first book of history. You find uh, that Paul, uh, is, is talked about primarily uh, after, I believe, around the, the 13th chapter of Acts. And prior to that, we talk uh, a lot about Apostle Peter. But it's also referred to, and I like this, it's referred to as the Acts of the Holy Ghost. And when the day of Pentecost was, was come, things changed. And now it's all about the Holy Ghost. We find in creation it was all about the Father. We find, amen, in the New Testament it's all about Jesus. In Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But now we have uh, the Acts of the Holy Ghost and it continues from AD 33 up until this day and until Jesus comes again. The biblical record in the book of Acts indicates that Mary, the mother of Jesus, the disciples, and other women and brethren received the promise of the Father. It was on that day that the church was born in a blaze of glory and 3,000 souls were added to the kingdom. 3,000 souls empowered by the Holy Ghost. 
in Acts chapter 8. It tells us about the revival in uh, Samaria where a deacon, not an apostle, uh, not an evangelist, but Deacon Philip preached and evil spirits were cast out. Many who had been paralyzed or lame were healed. And many believed and were baptized in water. Later, the apostles laid their hands on them and they received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. In Acts chapter 9, Saul of Tarshish got saved. Three days after Ananias laid hands on him and prayed, he was filled with the Holy Ghost. Then his name was changed to Paul. In Acts chapter 10, the whole house of Cornelius sat and listened to Peter as he preached the gospel. While he was preaching, the Holy Ghost fell on all of them which heard the word. And it goes on to say, on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. That says to me that God has no respect of person. It says to me that, that God doesn't care what denomination that you're in. God doesn't even care what religion that you started out as. God will fill you with the Holy Ghost. And we find here that it was the Holy Ghost fell when the word came forth. And I tell you, uh, if I want to be, when I was saved, when I received the Holy Ghost, it was, it was by the word of God. In other words, the word had been preached and the word was pricked in my heart and I received the Holy Ghost. Some folk get the Holy Ghost and it's off of a, a jumping shout. Some people get the Holy Ghost and, and they it was while uh, praises were going on and, and the choir was singing and, and it seemed like that you have to have that kind of thing to keep going. But praise God, when I received the Holy Ghost, it was because of, of the Word of God. And I tell you, the Word of God ought to be your lifeline as it is my lifeline. Acts chapter 19. Paul found certain disciples in Ephesus who didn't even know about the Holy Ghost. Paul laid hands on them and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. So we, we, we talked last week, uh, the, the beginning, the foundation uh, of the church being laid, uh, the Holy Ghost coming upon them. And then we began to talk, tell you about the great revival that, that took place. And we talked about some of it tonight, but the great revival that took place and the apostles went everywhere in the known world preaching the gospel. And he that believeth that was baptized received the Holy Ghost. The Bible goes on to tell us, or, or history, the Bible and history, tells us about the horrifying deaths that most of the disciples had received because of this newfound religion, this newfound relationship with Jesus Christ. We then talked to you uh, a bit about uh, the Christian faith. Today there are over 2 billion followers. Christianity is the largest religion now in the world. The largest of the Christian denominations is the Roman Catholic Church. We talked about that last week when we were letting you know uh, uh, that's it had its beginning in the first century, and it began in Rome. And uh, it's interesting to know that that institution to this day has approxi approximately 1,285,000,000 followers. That's the Roman Catholic Church. I tell you, when people talk about the end day revival, I tell you, I, I believe that some of that is going to happen right in the Catholic Church. And the Holy Ghost is going to come and just upset some stuff in the Catholic Church. That's, that's uh, what my thoughts are on this, in my opinion. 
I don't have anything to, to, uh, uh, to support that. But it seems to me that in the end time revival, I believe that is something that God is going to do. And if God gets into that, that church, I tell you, uh, there are going to be a great many that are going to be saved. Then we talked to you uh, about uh, Martin Luther. Last week we told you that Martin Luther uh, was a German monk and he was a Roman Catholic. And we told you that he was a gifted preacher. And then he uh, changed his theology. That theology that he had, that he received, we believe, from God, clashed with the Catholic faith. He began to write that salvation came not from any human work, but was absolute by faith in God's promise of forgiveness on the account of Jesus Christ. He began to say, you can't, you can't work to get saved. Now, when you get saved, as I said last week, you're gonna work, but you don't do something to get saved. You, don't, you can't uh, pay so much money to get saved. You, you, you can't do so many good deeds to get saved. You can't perform miracles as, as they have in the Catholic Church where they say if there have been three miracles that have been performed, that type of thing, then a person uh, can become a saint. Um, uh, we don't come to God like that. God uses us, but it is not something that we do to receive salvation. We are saved by grace through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. All right, then we talked about uh, John Wesley. John Wesley was, was uh, the co-founder of, of Methodism. And uh, from that, those studies, uh, we have the beginning of the Methodist Church and methodological study and devotion. Uh, he focused on having a personal relationship with, with uh, God and having uh, the focus being on holiness. Am I missing something? Is something happening that I need to know? Everything okay? something uh, those who are watching we're going to do, do some <laughs> adjusting here try to try to get this picture correctly uh, uh, my, my daughter's going to do something here um, letting you this really let you know that we are live <laughs> <laughs> I don't know because when I did it it ended up going towards me instead of flipping I don't know if I'm, I would have to probably start it over can you can you just flip it over that away and see if that'll cause it to work? All right, folks, we're going for a ride. <laughs> well, it'll be this the right way if it's like this. Yeah. Okay. It won't spin. Because it's not flipping, so it so it's the right way now, okay. but it won't. that uh, someone is letting us know that, that, that we're, we're not uh, coming on quite right there. That's, that, that's good. All right, we're going to continue on to the 20th century Pentecostalism. We talked uh, last week and said in 1906 uh, was known for two happenings in the state of California. One was a natural shaking which was the, the great uh, earthquake that was in uh, San Francisco, California. 
And then the spiritual shaking that was the great revival in Los Angeles, uh, California. This, this thing, uh, this phenomenon uh, called Pentecost, uh, the, the infilling of, of the spirit of, of the latter day, it did not start uh, there in uh, Los Angeles. It actually started in Wales. They had what they called the Welch Revival, but it was all the same, the coming of the Holy Ghost, the empowering of the people of God. From there, a revival sprung in the state of Kansas, in uh, the city of Topeka. And um, there was, was a, a, a minister by the name of Charles uh, Parham. And he is considered the founder of the modern apostolic church. He was a small time holiness preacher. Hold on for a moment. If you if you move that move, move the yeah move that out of the way, there you go. Yeah, just move it out of the way. That's going to get me. Just give me a picture. Yes. Thank you. Now now you're moving the stuff right in front of it. So move this way. No, move that out of the way. Now you said it right. There you go. Thank you. All right. That was station identification. Amen. Now we're back to it. Uh, this this man, uh, Parham, um, he was a, a small time uh, holiness preacher that was interested in the book of Acts. In January uh, of 1901 in Topeka, along with his wife and 12 others, they received the gift of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. From that, because people hearing about that, then we have uh, a Baptist preacher by the name of William Seymour. Seymour uh, was, was interested in this thing, uh, this phenomenon of, of, of speaking in other tongues. And so he began a revival uh, with just a small group and he began to talk to them, teach about the spirit being empowered or embodying them. And what happened? The Holy Ghost fell upon them. Interestingly enough, though, he himself did not receive the Holy Ghost right away, but he received it a week later. So we told you last week about Azusa. And that there are a couple of books that we are recommending if you want to know more about the history of Pentecost. The first would be called Azusa Street by a man by the name of Frank Bartleman. And the second one would be Phenomenon of Pentecost by another Frank, Frank Eward. When this revival took place, the Spirit of God was falling upon all of those who would come, whether they were believers or unbelievers. It was something about the atmosphere, and they would people were receiving the Holy Ghost, and everybody was on the same page. There was there was no uh, apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists, no titles at all. But everyone was a brother or sister in Christ. And the idea was simply that they wanted more of Jesus. And I don't know about you, but, but brothers and sisters, if we can get back to that, where we want more of Jesus, not concerned about who is up front, but concerned about knowing more about Jesus, if we can do that, brothers and sisters, I believe that there will be another awakening. The awakening has begun in other parts of the world, but I'm talking about back here that there needs to be another awakening and we will see souls saved. During that time, souls were being blessed. Everybody was not concerned whether you were Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, Lutheran. All they wanted was to be like Jesus. And they did. Out of that revival came 
several Pentecostal denominations. Now, I'm saying several, but at the beginning there was just one. And out of this sprang different denominations or, 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 or different uh, forms of, of beliefs that came out of the same awakening. Each of these have their roots at Azusa. Within 10 years, that tiny meeting that took place, many organizations came out of that, and I'll just, just name a couple of them. Uh, the Pentecostal Assemblies of the World came out of, of that. The Assemblies of God, out of that. The Church of God, out of that. The Church of God in Christ, out of that. Many offshoots, and from these sprang organizations. I'll tell you that of the apostolic organizations, uh, there is an organization that is called AWCF, and that's the Apostolic World Christian Fellowship. In that, under that umbrella, there are 181 organizations. I'm not talking about councils, I'm talking about organizations, that those organizations have many churches in their organization, of which the Fellowship of Christian Believers are one of them. Thousands of missionaries went out after Azusa. Thousands went out. And Pentecostal churches sprung up in Canada, Germany, Sweden, Norway, England, Scotland, France, Holland, Denmark, Mexico, Brazil, El Salvador, Venezuela, Chile, should I go on? It began and it exploded from that Azusa Street uh, revival. Sometimes we think that uh, our, our beginnings are small, but can you see out of just a handful of people wanting more of Jesus, what happens when we get with one mind, one strength, and no division. But guess what? Division seems to come as long as we are in, uh, as long as we are, are, are human. The Bible said that offenses will come, and it seems that this is what occurred there as well. Offenses came. Um, uh, there are those who uh, received different revelations of the Word of God. Now, from this, I, I said that we were going to talk about um, things that separate. Remember this. When it comes to God, if you want to know the, this is of God, God adds and God multiplies. Okay? The devil, the devil subtracts and the devil divides. That's his MO to subtract and to divide. The thief cometh but to steal and to destroy. But I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So issues came out. Uh, one of the issues uh, came out uh, was uh, what they called the, the, the new issue. The first issue uh, that came up, or I shouldn't say the first issue, but one of the issues that came up uh, had to do with uh, baptism, water baptism. And um, there are those who uh, go by uh, what Matthew 28 and 19 said, go ye therefore into all the world, teaching all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even until the end of the age. 
So uh, there are those who, when it came to baptizing people, immersing in water, man, there are those who say, uh, we must repeat this saying. And uh, uh, there seems to be a consensus for a little bit, but then there were those who received a revelation of, of Jesus and uh, a revelation of um, uh, the baptism. Um, what is, 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 is the proper words that we use when we baptize? So this was an issue. It came up, and now we're, we're not uh, talking about or, or just wanting to worship God and to praise God. Now we're talking about procedures. How do we do what God has asked us to do? And then there were those uh, who had received uh, the revelation of the name of Jesus, the power that's in the name of Jesus. And they recited, man, the book of Acts, Acts chapter number 2, verse number 38, when it said, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So what we have then is that there are those who say it's important that you speak the name. In, in uh, Matthew, Matthew said, uh, baptizing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And then uh, the, the apostolic way is the name is Jesus. The name of the Father is Jesus. The name of the Son is Jesus. The name of the Holy Ghost is Jesus. We'll get into that at another time because we're going to be uh, talking about uh, later on, we're going to be dealing uh, with the oneness of God. We will be dealing, amen, uh, with water baptism and we'll be dealing with the actual infilling of the Spirit. But it's important for us to know that there are things that divide us. And it's important uh, as, as the, the day approaches, we get closer to, to the coming of Jesus Christ, that we hold on to the things that we have in common. There are always going to be some things that we may uh, have different ideas on. And I'll just, I'll just say this. Uh, uh, you can take it for, for, for what it's worth. I'm not saying the Lord, thus saith the Lord, but I'm just going to tell you what I think about this. We, we have had this coronavirus for a while, and uh, it has caused us to... Uh, be isolated and uh, many of our churches uh, have not had a actual service with people coming uh, when you don't have people that are coming people may receive uh, the word of God as you are tonight there may be those that are picked, pricked in your heart and they want to be saved and they go to Romans chapter 10 for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now, let me just ask you something. Here someone is at their home and they're, they're, they're sick with a corona and they, 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 they hear God's word and they say, I want to be saved. And they give their, their heart to God, but New Vision Christian Fellowship is not having service. We can't baptize them in the name of Jesus. Are they going to be lost? Just something to think about. The thief that was on the cross, there was no water there, but there was a Jesus there. And as long as Jesus was there, Jesus said, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. I'm not telling anybody uh, not to baptize. No, that's not the point of what I'm saying. What I am saying is, is that, that God has a way. God does things his way. And guess what? I don't have a heaven or a hell to put you in, and neither do any preacher on the face of the earth. No one has a hell, no one has a heaven to put us in. Matter of fact, uh, you remember uh, when, when God, uh, Jesus was trying to tell his disciples to invite people uh, to, to heaven, he said, I've given you the keys to the kingdom. Whatsoever you bind on earth, I'll bind it where in heaven. I'll, I'll, I'll close the doors. If you loose it on earth, 
I'll loose it in heaven. In other words, you have the ability to open up heaven. And brothers and sisters, that's, that's where I'm at. I want to open up heaven to, to as many that are calling on the name of Jesus. And so my, my position is this. If you have an opportunity uh, to, to, to get uh, somewhere and be baptized in water, you ought to do it. But if there is none, you just accept the Lord as your Savior. And I tell you, if you ask him to fill you with his spirit, he will. Amen. He is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. So that's my, that's my, my, my feelings on it. Uh, we here at, at New Vision Christian Fellowship do baptize in the name of, of the Lord Jesus according to Acts chapter 2, verse 38. If you want to write these down, if you want to study it for yourself, Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Acts chapter 8, verse number 12. Acts chapter 8, verse number 16. Acts chapter 10. Verse number 48, Acts chapter 19, verse number 5, and Acts chapter 22, verse number 16. And this is where we see, amen, uh, that after Pentecost, this is what the disciples, the disciples did. So that was that was one of the issues that separated. Another issue se that separated was the oneness of God. The idea there are those who believe uh, the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. The oneness believes that God is the Father, He is the Son, He is the Holy Spirit. In other words, He embodies each of them, or, or should I say that the one believes that they're there it's a triune there are, 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 are three that are separate that work together as one and then the the, uh, the oneness believes that it, it is one one entity one God but three uh, manifestations of God um, there are those who believe that that uh, God was father in creation he is Son in redemption, and He is now the Holy Ghost, Amen. As as He revitalizes or He um, regenerates. So here we go with the oneness. Though you had one group that was saying, "I don't see that," and you have another group that's saying, "But this is what the Bible says," and that, and so arguments uh, occur. When I was growing up. Um, I had some some of my uh, Church of God in Christ my brothers, and um, uh, we would uh, come to, 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 to school, and over lunch, we'd have our little debate. We would debate uh, the Word of God, and uh, it was, it was kind of funny because they would have valid points, and I would have my valid point, and then we would, we would leave and go back to, to our churches and stuff, and we'd come back with something else to say. And it was always a, a, a debate on this. But the Bible says, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of the angels, received on in, in the world. And, and so what, what, what we're getting at here is, is that, that God uh, has to cause revelation to occur. In other words, uh, he's the revelator. I don't believe that God is going to hold me accountable for something that has not been revealed to me when he is the only one that can reveal. How many of you have read uh, uh, a scripture and you read it and read it and read it and um, you, you got a, a bit of, of understanding of it, but then years later you read the same thing that you read before and now you see something in it that you didn't see before. That's revelation. God reveals himself. And if God does not reveal the oneness to you, then, then uh, those who, who believe in the oneness, you thank God that God has blessed you and you have that understanding that, that, that God 
Jesus, God are one. But I want to, to say something to you, and, and again, this is, this is opinion. Remember I said this is opinion, but I believe it's, it's based in scripture. One scripture that has been used to support this conviction uh, that you've got to uh, be, you, you have to know uh, that he's, Jesus is God to get saved. One of the scriptures that, the, that is used is John chapter 8, verse number 24, which says, I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins, for if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. So uh, on, on the surface, uh, he, he says, if you don't believe I'm he, you're going to die in your sins. But he is not saying, if you don't believe I'm God, you will die in your sins. And, 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 and uh, let's, let's look at it um, this way. When we see it uh, in the Amplified Version, um, the Amplified Version says, that is why I told you that you will die unforgiven and condemned in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am the one I claim to be, you will die in your sins. Let me say it again. For if you do not believe that I am the one I claim to be, you will die in your sins. And Jesus, his claim was that he was the son of God. Amen. And so it's important for you to believe that that Jesus is the Son of God for you to be saved. You must believe that the Son of God was the Lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world, that he was that, that sacrificial Lamb that was going to give his life for you. Man. Uh, but this also has caused divisions, amen, from uh, the revival, that those, uh, those who had that belief and so they begin to group in one direction, and then the others begin to group in another direction. Uh, some of the, the, the churches that, that formed out of that um, was the Church of God in Christ. Uh, the Church of God in Christ now has oh, over uh, 6 million members worldwide and is the largest Pentecostal church, church in the world. That was founded by, by Bishop Charles uh, Mason in 1907. Uh, when you look at these numbers, it's kind of interesting because uh, oftentimes we say, well, well who, who came first? Uh, because when we, we see different ones established, uh, we see the, the, the Pentecostal Assemblies of the world, um, uh, their, their uh, Bishop Hayward, G.T. Hayward, uh, began his church in 1909, and then the Pentecost Assemblies of the World came into being in 1911. But you got to remember, all these folks were, this, were, 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 under, were, were the same. It was not until we began to, uh, to dissect the Word of God and we begin to point fingers and say, I'm right, you're wrong, that... Um, the vision came. Um, uh, I, I kind of like uh, uh, what was that that, that man's name um, uh, that was in in Los Angeles when he when the riots were occurring because he had been beat up by um, uh, policemen. Uh, he, he said to, to everybody, "Can we all just get along?" <laughs> and and can't can't can we we just get along. Um, I am uh, with a organization, the Fellowship of Christian Believers, and I, I really uh, enjoy being a part of that fellowship because it is the Fellowship of Christian Believers. So we have in that organization some that may not believe exactly like I believe, but that does not stop us from fellowshipping together. And it shouldn't stop you from fellowshipping together if you believe something different than someone else. If they believe in Jesus Christ, you got to know. 
they believe that the Lord Jesus, that is the love of their soul, you ought to fellowship with them, regardless of what the name is on the outside, because it's all about what's on the inside, and that is having Jesus Christ, having, amen, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost dwelling on the inside. So uh, there, there, were, there was that division that took place. Well, um, by uh, 1924, there was another division that took place, and it, it, were, it fell upon race, racial, excuse me, racial lines. It was due to logistical and social problems that were created by the Jim Crow law. Interesting, it, it is interesting. Uh, there there uh, were, were those who were upset um, because uh, there, was, there was interracial marriage going on and there was, there was certain ones that didn't like um, uh, this group marrying something from their group and that type of thing. And it is also said that there were those who didn't like certain ones uh, being over them. And of course that has to talk about, that has to do with organization. I said last week, when you organize, now you have hierarchies. And, and some people, uh, because they're still in their flesh and we're, we're struggling in our flesh, we have issues. And there are those who had issues. And uh, the PAW uh, uh, was, was one and um, out of the PAW comes another organization uh, which was called uh, United Pentecostal Church, the UPC. So divisions were, were, were taking place. That was on the oneness side. And then on the other side, uh, there were those things that were taking place uh, with, with the Church of God in Christ. There were those that was taking place in the Church of God, taking place in the Assemblies of God. All of these were offshoots. Everybody still coming from this Azusa street, but now this one has their opinion on something and this one has their opinion on, on, on something. And instead of trying to love on Jesus, we find ourselves being tripped up by uh, my ideas or my thoughts or even my revelations. When God gives a revelation, it doesn't mean that everybody's going to understand that revelation that God has given. So that was one of the divisions that took place, one of the separations that took place. And thank God uh, that, that we have, have come together, amen, today. It, it's a lot better, but it still is not where it ought to be. Can I tell you this? Sundays is the most separated um, day of the week, Sunday because you have the blacks worshiping over here, the whites worshiping over here, you have the, the Hispanics worshiping over here, you have the Chinese working over, uh, worshiping over, over there. And so it is, it is segregation. And, and what God wants is, is, was, is what happened on the day of Pentecost. What God wants is what happened on Azusa Street. And that's what we need to be asking God for in this 21st century, is for another Azusa Street, for there to be an outbreak, not, not just an outbreak, amen, but, but for God to, 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 to move like he did. And when he moved, it went all over the world. Separations. What was one of the other separations? During that time, there were, great, uh, there were great men and women of God who interpreted and taught the word as they saw it. And uh, unfortunately, there are those who were very dogmatic about their, their, their stands on certain things and uh, made that religion instead of relationship, made it that if you don't believe this, then, then uh, you'll have nothing, no part with us. 
One of the big ones that it had to do with was divorce and remarriage. Uh, there were those, of course, who believe that, that you should never divorce. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, with remarriage, that would knock a whole bunch of us out, starting with myself. Um, but God is a merciful God. God is, is a God of, of grace. And God knows how to, to, um, uh, to, to bring healing in, in, in a relationship. And he knows when uh, to, to draw uh, people uh, away from one another. I shouldn't say draw people away, but, but he knows uh, what he's doing. He allows some things to be. And he uh, knows how to even to work through that. What are the things that, that, they, that they clash on? There was, uh, I don't know, I came from, from a church that, uh, uh, where you can't do. It seemed like that there were more can't do's in the church than can do's. Uh, I remember uh, it, was, it was always said, we are of the world, we are in the world, but not of the world. And so whatever the world was doing, whatever was in there, you know, oh, that was, that was taboo. Here was a taboo. Women wearing pants. Some of y'all remember that. Women wearing makeup. I don't know why, I don't know why it was always about the women. Um, uh, I, some of you may not have known this, but there were, there were those, uh, some um, had a thing about women wearing wigs. <laughs> and, and, and said, if you wore wigs, you know, I mean, you can't be saved. Well, there'd be a whole lot of us, a whole lot of y'all, I, I, didn't, I didn't wear my wig today, uh, <laughs> but uh, a lot of us would not uh, be in the church uh, if, if you believe that today. And, of course, there was those that had to do with earrings. And then there were those that, that, that had to do with uh, certain colors, wearing certain colors. As I, as I look back over the history, the primary colors in the church was black and white. Black and white. And that's why, you know, in just about any church, the ushers, ushers are wearing it. Black and white. Amen. Uh, there was one uh, renowned minister uh, that was saying you shouldn't wear red. And uh, he preached that and uh, went to a convention preaching that said you shouldn't wear red. And by the next convention time, he got a revelation. And so the next time he came to church, uh, to the convention, he had on red. Uh, praise God. But think about all the people that we, we put in hell because of something that we ourselves believe. God saying, well, I'm not really in that, but we have put so much emphasis on that. Uh, when I was growing up, uh, there were those who would just say, we'll allow the, the, the Lord to move on a person and allow the Lord to take off what needs to be taken off and put on what needs to put, be put on. But now we, we've had uh, agents of the Lord and said they were of the Lord, and then they caused that division. And so many people, I, 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 I talked to uh, a number of people who... Uh, were saved and walked away from the Lord uh, because of those type of beliefs. I remember when they said you couldn't wear, uh, excuse me, you couldn't watch television. Hmm. Uh, you couldn't go to the movies. And uh, I remember getting a good beating because I went to the movies one time. And um, hmm. uh, it, it was things like that. Uh, you couldn't dance. When I was growing up, man, I uh, recall when I was in high school, uh, my senior year of high school, uh, I was was uh, either the first or the second, I can't remember, uh, a black uh, a student body president of Grant High School in Portland, Oregon. And um, I had obligations, and one of those things that I had to do, uh, we had our prom. And I had some things that I had to do, uh, not the, the senior class president, but the, the student body president, some things that I had to do because there was a festival coming up. You don't need to know all that. 
But the point is, is that I, I was ready. I was ready to go. And uh, my, my pastor uh, told me, he, he found out I was going to go and he told me I couldn't go. I had my tuxedo, I had, had borrowed one of the Saints cars, I got my haircut, I had hair back then, and I was ready to go. And he told me that if you go, you'll have no part with this ministry. It was that harsh. And it was, it was a difficult decision and I went on and, and stayed. I did not go uh, to that. And it, it, the person that I was taking uh, never spoke to me after that because this person had, had, had gotten her dress and all of these things and spent money and, and now I'm saying we can't go. Well, I wonder if that's a soul that is, is lost because of a belief there were those during that time that said you can't participate in sports. There are those who said you couldn't go to uh, sports uh, events. All of those things because of, of that causes separation and does not unify. And today we've got to recognize that this is what God wants. God wants unification. God does not want division. And if we, if we will begin to, to look at the principal things and ask God to just let your spirit have free course, then things will occur. We're now in the 21st century. Um, um, uh, I, I missed a point. Uh, from that came uh, the faith movement, the message of prosperity. These are, these are things that even in the church body today uh, we, we, we are, are not the same on. And finally, eternal security. That, uh, that's a lesson that's going to take some time. Mm -hmm. uh, eternal security, because that, that is, a, that is a, totally a lesson in itself. But these are things that separate. And I only have a few more minutes, and so I, I, I want to get now to the 21st century, where we're at right now. Uh, I read an article from, from Dr. Jerry Vine, and he's the pastor of First Baptist Church in Jacksonville, Florida. It said that the average Christian and the average church are somewhat boggled down between Calvary and Pentecost. They've been to Calvary for pardoning, pardoning of sin, but they have not been to Pentecost for power. Notice in Matthew 1, uh, in Bethany, Bethany means that God is with us. Jesus was born in Beth, not Bethany, Bethlehem. Jesus was born in Bethlehem. So Bethlehem introduces God with us. Then when we, when we look at at Calvary, we see that God is for us. First one, God with us. Second one, God for us. And 2 Corinthians 5 and 21 says, For he hath made him to be sin for us, for he who knew no sin. Um, let me say that again. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So we have in Matthew, we have God is with us. In 2 Corinthians, God is for us. But then at Pentecost, what we have is God is in us. God with us, God for us, God in us. And that's where we have to, have to draw the line today, uh, that God is with us, he's for us, and he is in us. Dr. Vine goes on uh, to say, I believe that the average Christian is much like the e Ephesian believers. In Acts chapter number 19, uh, Paul said unto them, 
Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? They replied that they had not even known that there was a Holy Ghost. Many Christians do not understand the role of the Holy Ghost, and they have not appropriated the power of the Holy Ghost in their personal lives. It's one thing that we appropriate the power when we're in the church. We appropriate the power when we want to dance in the spirit. We appropriate the power uh, when we are, are praying and when we're speaking in tongues. But we need to appropriate the power of God in our everyday life when we go to the grocery store, when we are, are working, when we're going to work. This is the time in which we need to appropriate the power of God. And when we see someone that is in need, you need to appropriate the power of God in your life. Someone else said, this is the day of Pentecost substitutes. Lacking the real power and fire from God, we try to produce our own fireworks. We are like auxiliary power supplies, batteries operated so that when the real power goes out, we can switch on our own power supply and manifest our own. We are living in the day of programs. We're living in the day of, of pep rallies and promotions. And all of these things try to duplicate what the Holy Ghost did on the day of Pentecost. When the wind blew and the fire fell. These are the days of Pentecostal substitutes. We, amen, we create our own wind. We fan our own flames. And we have our own fire. But we lack the reality and the warmth of the real thing. That is the Holy Ghost. This is an indictment on the modern day church. So as we see this, we've got to do something about it. The coronavirus, uh, when I think about this, is, is, is a pandemic. And we need to have a spiritual pandemic when we, a man, are, are, are doing like, like the, 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 the virus does. We're breathing when you breathe on someone else, when you breathe on them that they can receive this um, this spirit or, or this illness. We recognize that if we having the Holy Ghost can do that and recognize that we can give it to somebody. And if we give it to somebody, then it'll spread to somebody else. This is what we need. We need a, an outbreak of the Holy Ghost. And brothers and sisters, as I draw this to a close today, I admonish you Amen. It's time for us to get back together and it's time for us to pray one with another that there be the fire of the Holy Ghost will fall again. Amen. And if we do this, amen, we'll find that that will come and will be able to, through us, do exploits. Amen. So we're going to draw this to a close. And uh, we apologize for, for uh, uh, the, 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 the technical the difficulties. That, thank you. Yeah, the tech. <laughs> what, you, uh, now you're. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we apologize for the technical difficulties on today. Uh, we'll have it better next time. Amen. So we, we are praying for you. Um, here in Arizona, uh, they have opened up. Uh, some places, um, I, I know that there are uh, three women in this household that are glad that they'll be able to get their nails done, and that kind of thing. Praise the Lord, they're, they're laughing at me, but praise the Lord. Uh, but, but let's be careful as, as we, we uh, begin to move out. And let's continue. When you leave your houses, pray that, that the Holy Ghost will cover us, the, the power of God will cover us, and if he does, he'll be better than, than any mask you can have. He'll be better than that. And before you walk out the door, you, you should just pray, Lord, cover me with your blood. And he'll, he'll do just that. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this, this hour. 
of teaching and we ask you that you would just bless us as we leave this place Lord and that you would move on us as we go throughout our communities our states our nation our world bless us Lord and God we want you to strike a fire the fire of evangelism the fire of the Holy Ghost again Lord as you did on the day of Pentecost as you did in Topeka Kansas as you did in Los Angeles California Lord we pray Lord for another one in the 21st century and we will praise you for it, God and all the glory and honor belongs to you in Jesus name we pray amen, amen. God bless you